remember last time I was here. Do any of you guys remember last time I was here? Was it Halloween? That was a fucking awesome show too. You know, there's a lot of things that I, uh, there's a lot of things that I want to talk to you guys about tonight. Um, but I want to use my time wisely, you know? How many of you guys, this is your first time seeing me play a concert? see my show for the very first time because I feel like, you know, as much of myself as I try to put into my albums and into like social media and all that, it's like so different being here in person, being in the same room with you, you know? Like, it's just a completely different thing. I tweeted a couple days ago and I was like, uh, I feel like people don't really know me until they see me, see me play a concert. Okay, in my defense, I only have three minutes, you know. But it's still my favorite part of every set, I'm not gonna lie. It's really fun. You know, um... It's a really strange thing, um, kind of the way that my career has gone because I have a lot of brand new fans um, who are just starting to get into my music. Um, but I feel like I've been doing this for so long. I've been touring for almost a decade now. Um, which is crazy because I'm only 27 years old. Um, I'm almost 28, I guess. It's like a couple, a couple of months away. Um, which is like, uh, it's a big deal in the musician world to turn 28, you know? You guys better put me in a bubble for the next three months. It's especially strange, um, not just because I've been doing it for so long, but because last year um, I had a baby. Yeah, I gave birth. Isn't that nuts? I remember getting in the uh, getting in the car on the way home from the hospital, just like holding his face like this the whole drive home in the car seat because I was so scared for some reason that he was gonna like go like this and just like not breathe or something. Um, and that was the first of many brand new fears that I acquired as a parent um, when I used to be fearless, you know? Or I used to at least be very good at pretending I was, you know? Um, but becoming a parent made me realize how actually fucking terrified I am of literally everything. Um, but in a weird way, making music for and with you guys prepared me a lot for, for parenthood because I, uh... <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. No, it really did. It really did. Um, you know, because for years I just kind of like surrendered myself over to this thing and I like lived, slept, ate, breathed everything for it, um, for the art and uh, I would spend all this time making records and, and being like, this is what it means to me and this is what I want it to mean to them and then I would put it out and 
It would go out into the world, and all of a sudden people were like, well, this is what it means to me, or this is what I think it means. Um, it would take on this life of its own, and that was really scary, because I was like, no! This is what I wanted it to mean. And I had to let the art go out and grow legs and become its own thing. And one day I'm gonna have to do that for my son Ender, too. It's fucking scary, man. It's scary. I'm so lucky that some of you, some of you are old as shit, old as dirt, old as dirt, but I'm just kidding. And some of you guys are very young. And you've given me this incredible insight into the type of world that my son's going to grow up in. And even though it feels chaotic and apocalyptic and like fucking hell sometimes, you guys give me a lot of faith. A lot of faith. And he's gonna grow up in a place that's pretty okay, you know? So thank you for that. It's gonna be okay. I wrote this song a couple years ago. Cool, but, you know, I was going on stage and the whole thing was like, it's kind of like apples and oranges, right? Because the Manic Tour was like a huge production. Like I, not that this isn't, but like, <laughs> me, shoots like fire out of the fucking floor. And I'm like, this isn't really a production. Um, I mean, in my, in my defense on the Manic Tour, I was literally doing like ballet in the sky. So like, you know, to me, this is, to me, this is playing it cool and taking it easy. Um, but there's a reason why I did the tour like you know, and it's because I did the Manic Tour over in Europe and in the UK and we had like 10 costume changes and like this whole set where everything was very specific and to the minute and it was super rehearsed and uh, I just, I just fucking hated it, you know? And for this tour, I decided that I was just gonna go out every night and give you guys me. Take it or leave it, you know? There was moments where I was like, oh, are they gonna wish what I did? And I was coming on stage in a giant ball gown, with a corset. And he's like, fuck that, I won't be comfortable. And I wanna be comfortable and give them the best show. Some nights when I would come on stage and I would be like, oh my god, is everybody gonna notice my nails aren't done? So stupid. I think there's like a lot of standards that we hold performers to, especially femme and female performers, you know? There's a standard. I was thinking about all the great male musicians I've seen live, and they come out on stage with fucking jeans and a t-shirt, and they play guitar, and they don't dance. Sometimes they don't even fucking talk. Most of them are drunk. Which is cool. For them. And I was like, fuck it. If they can do that, then that's exactly what I'm gonna fucking do. And I wanna tell you guys something. I'm glad I made that choice because um, this tour is my highest selling tour I've ever done. And what that tells me is that I'm one of the luckiest performers in the world because I have a fan base that accepts me for exactly as I am.
And I hope you guys know that that luxury, that privilege, I extend that to you as well. I'm here to receive you and accept you exactly as you fucking are. Unless you're a Warriors fan, I don't accept the Warriors fans. Um, sorry. I'm not gonna say anything about the Suns, because you know. We're in territory. I'm still holding on to this thing. Okay, I should probably give it to someone. Alright, let's see how this goes. It's pretty windy, so don't judge me, okay? I'm not very athletic. I love lesbians. Thank you. There's a sign that says lesbians love you. I love lesbians. Thank you. Okay, ready? Can I go? Can I drop it? Is it my... I want to talk to you guys for a second. Today in Arizona, you cannot get an abortion. You are in a room right now full of 12,000 people. And the reality is, is that someone standing to the right of you or to the left of you has benefited in some way by abortion. That's the reality. You guys are at this concert right now because I had an abortion that saved my life. I struggled to get pregnant for a very long time. I struggled to get pregnant for so long. And a lot of people think that because I struggled with infertility, with endometriosis, with other reproductive illnesses, that that would mean that once I got my baby, that I wouldn't be pro-choice anymore. But I would not have been able to have my baby if I had not had that abortion. Motherhood, parenthood, is not something that you can force someone into. It's not. I hope that you guys understand that there is a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done right now. And it starts on the ground, and it starts with us, and it starts with us protesting and petitioning our local legislators. You're a man in this audience right now, and you're sharing statistics on Instagram and infographics and saying, wow, oh, man, that's really fucked up. What you should do instead is you should be sharing stories about how you've benefited from abortion somehow. The truth is, The truth is that my heart breaks looking out into this audience because I see so many people, so many people who deserve to have incredible lives, who deserve the right to the health care that they need, who deserve the right to choose themselves in a situation where there is a choice. I don't want you to ever have to be in a situation where you don't have access to that. I'm looking at your faces right now. I'm looking at you. I am remembering your faces. I am remembering what you look like, what you are wearing. And I know that the reality is 
is that some of the people I am looking at right now are going to need an abortion one day. And you deserve that. Whether it's a life-threatening situation or it's not, you deserve it. And here in Arizona, you guys gotta promise me that you're gonna do that work so that the person to the left of you and to the right of you has that right for the rest of their lives. And if you don't like it, you can go home right now. I don't care. If you don't like it, I don't know why you came to a Halsey concert because I've never been shy, but this is how I feel. guys very, 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 very much. All right, now let's take that rage and let's do something good with it for the next five minutes, huh? So thank you for some of those of you who stood out in the heat or in the rain or in your cars or waited around today. There's no way that I was going to get on this stage and not give you every single fucking last drop of sweat that I have in my body. However, it is getting late. You know. I don't always know exactly the right thing to say or the perfect way to articulate to articulate it. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, but I just want to say, like, I love what I do so much. And when I get on this stage, I hope you can tell that I am having the time of my fucking life. Um, it is never a chore, it is never a job. You guys genuinely have given me something that fills me up in a way that I cannot even begin to explain to you. And honestly, it's probably not a good thing because I don't know who I would be without getting up here and doing this with you guys. Um, I don't know what we would be without each other sometimes. Um, Felix, thank you so much for bearing with me tonight, for hanging in there. You guys are one hell of a fucking crowd.